Hello and welcome to St John the Baptist on this first Sunday of Christmas. Bishop Allen will be preaching for us later, for which I am most grateful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. We meet to celebrate the coming of Christ into the world. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. It's time for our first carol. silence before our Heavenly Father, before our prayer of confession. God our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Jesus, our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God in Trinity, eternal unity of perfect love, Gather the nations to be one family and draw us into your holy life through the birth of Emmanuel, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's time for our Bible readings. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. 
He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir, through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Most Christmases I have a large family gathering when lots of people come to stay. I remember a few years ago when my slightly wacky sister was determined that we should go out carol singing. I, I was nervous about launching my family on the unsuspecting neighbours, but my sister was not to be put off. We made lanterns, we warmed homemade pies up, we took musical instruments with us, and we decided to go round and sing to our neighbours, most of whom I knew very well and counted as friends. But it was cold, so we were wrapped up with coats and scarves and hats, so much so, I guess, I wasn't very recognisable. On hearing the carol singers, at least two of the neighbours, who were clearly at home, simply refused to answer the door, perhaps fearful that we were asking for money. Another neighbour did eventually emerge, half opened the door and tried to put some money out through the gap in what appeared to be an attempt to get rid of us as quickly as possible. It was clear he thought we were just a nuisance and more or less said so until in frustration I whipped my hat and my scarf off and he recognised me. He was visibly mortified when he realised who I was and started apologising. As we returned home that cold Christmas evening, I saw myself and my neighbours in a new light, living in our secure homes, locked away with room for our families and friends, but with so little space for anyone else. On that first Christmas morning, Joseph and Mary arrived in Bethlehem, but the town was thronged with visitors and all the homes and hostels were full. They travelled around, seeking somewhere to stay. 
Do you have any space for us? But as St Luke tells us, the only warm, dry place they could find was in a stable because there was no room for them. No one was able or willing to welcome them in and receive them. For over 400 years, Christians in Mexico have remembered this episode and reenacted it each year at Christmas. They call it the Posada. Its origins lie in a tradition started by conceptionist monks visiting each other's monasteries, carrying large statues of Joseph and Mary. They would approach the massive wooden doors on the monastery and knock, crying out, is there a welcome? Do you have room for Christ? Still today, this tradition persists. As Advent draws to a close, people set out from their homes bearing statues of the Holy Family. When they arrive at their neighbours, they knock on their doors. And they shout out, is there a welcome here? Do you have room for Christ? Then the doors are opened wide and they enter with the Holy Family. This custom, this lovely custom, expresses one of the most significant truths of Christmas. Jesus Christ comes to dwell with us in our homes and among our families. He's not only to be found in the cathedrals or the great churches or the monasteries, but he makes his home in the ordinary places of life among us. In the words of Angelus Silesius, Christ could be born a thousand times in Galilee, but all in vain until he is born in me. The Posada picks up on another of the most intriguing aspects of the Christmas story. As those most momentous of events took place at the first Christmas, the vast majority of people missed what was going on. The Gospels tell us nothing about the crowds of people who were meeting up with their friends for the census in Bethlehem. No, it's the shepherds, men who in that uh, society were outcasts, they were the first to hear the good news. It's the mysterious magi, the, the wise men from foreign lands who make the journey and bow down with their special gifts to worship the Christ child. At the beginning of his Gospel, St John tells us, to all who received him, Christ, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. At the heart of the events of Christmas is the invitation to open ourselves up to God, to open the doors and to receive a gift. This, of course, turns upside down many people's expectations of Christianity, which they think is about commandments and rules and obligations, the very opposite of receiving something. But God still comes knocking on the door and asking, is there anyone within who will make space for Christ? For those who make space for him, there's a special promise that they'll receive a gift he gave power to become children of God. But lest we lapse into pietism and retreat from the world and all its pain and suffering, and this year we've known much of that, we need to remember that when Jesus does come knocking on our door, he usually does so in the most surprising guises. Later in the Gospels, when Jesus returns and reveals himself to the righteous, they ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick and in prison and go to visit you? The king will say, truly I tell you, whenever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. We too can learn from the Mexican tradition of Posada. In the midst of the busyness of our Christmas celebrations, we can open ourselves up, listening and expectant, 
so that we can make space and welcome Christ into our homes and into our lives. And when we receive him, the greatest of all Christmas presents, we will be transformed by his presence and his grace. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts by faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray to the Father who has revealed his glory by the incarnation of the Son. We pray for our community. Loving God, we thank you for your many blessings since our church fire. We ask that as the months progress, we will stay united as your body Protect us from distraction as we seek to rebuild your beautiful house of prayer and grant us courage to witness to your generous love to all whom we meet. Amen. Now and at all times inspire the church to proclaim the good news of the Son of God through whom his people have become God's children. We bring before you Lord Heidi, John and Reg and thank you for their continued hard work and support and all for all who work behind the scenes to bring the services into our homes and into the town hall. We pray for all Christians in West Africa, India and South Africa, for all who worship at Thurfield and Kelshaw Parish Church, being led by the Reverend Harry Steele and for the work of global care. Make us fervent with the new law of love that we have received from him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to the simple and humble people of this world the vision of the shepherds who rejoiced at the birth of Jesus. We ask for the continued support for all our local NHS workers keep them safe and well, and for all those working to empty our bins and keep our streets clean. We pray for all those suffering from financial hardships at this time, for our young people struggling to find work, and for all those being made redundant at this time. Lord God, whose Son Jesus Christ understood people's fear and pain before they spoke of them, we pray for those in hospital. We pray for our young people and their uncertain futures. We pray for those anxious about their jobs and for those being made redundant at this time. Surround the frightened with your tenderness. Give strength to those in pain and hold the weak in your arms of love and give hope and patience to those who are recovering. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give all in the field of finance, wisdom and the grace to use their skill, not as an end but for the welfare of all. May the divine glory and goodness shine upon all nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Give grace to our families that we may meditate with Mary upon the mystery of the Incarnation. Give us tolerance as we live and work with others. Open our eyes that they may see the deepest needs of people. Move our hands that they may feed the hungry. Touch our heart that we may bring warmth to the despairing. And teach us the generosity that welcomes strangers. Let us share our possessions to clothe the naked. Give us the care that strengthens the sick. Make us share in the quest to set the prisoner free. Since none can live to themselves alone. 
Help us to care for our community. Inspire with the true joy of Christmas those among whom we work and grant them peace in their daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have mercy on all, on all whose lives are constrained by falsehood and superstition. Father, we pray for the many who are trapped by growing burdens of debt, who see no way out and who despair for their future. Give them courage to tackle the problems they face, clarity in taking decisions which will turn their situation around and faith that as they cry to you in their trouble, you will deliver them from your darkness. Let your spirit come into their hearts to set them free, sharing the glory of human nature renewed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those on our weekly intercessions and for all those known in our hearts at this time. And we pray for those who have often celebrated this holy time and have passed through a new birth into eternal life. Audrey Cave and Michael Belton. And the anniversary at this time of Alice Hutches and George Ellis. As they were once adopted into your family on earth, we rejoice with them that they are forever, forever with you, their Heavenly Father. Rejoicing with those who first saw the incarnate Christ, we pray in his name. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to all in whom he delights. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Word made flesh, life of the world, in your incarnation you embraced our poverty. By your spirit may we share in your riches. Amen. Blessed be God, who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, who fills our praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours, always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who for love of our fallen race humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary by the power of your Spirit and lived as one of us. In this mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused his light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. In him we see our God made visible, and so are caught up in the love of the God we cannot see. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, 
drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes again. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us into your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, John the Baptist and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Christ is the true bread which has come down from heaven. Lord, give us this bread always. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son shared at Nazareth the life of an earthly home, help your church to live as one family, united in love and obedience, and bring us all at last to our home in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God our Father, you have made known to us again the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Confirm our faith and fix our eyes on him until the day dawns and Christ the morning star rises in our hearts. Amen. 
Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with peace and goodwill and make you partakers of the divine nature. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. It's time for our final carol. God bless you.